Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Set.com video, let's discuss AMD's Greenland GPU, shall we? They are, of course, not going to be released until next year, and they will stack up completely and utterly against NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, which will have roughly the same time frame of release. Now, the GPU will feature up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2, which is pretty damn insane when you think about it. The GPU itself is rumoured to feature between 15 to 18 billion transistors, which is absolute insanity. From a series of leaks, it will appear that the Greenland architecture is being aimed at a multitude of different devices, specifically discrete and APUs. Just to give you an indication of where AMD could possibly go be going with this, there have been official confirmations from AMD that they are planning to launch a server class APU which features TFLOPs of computing performance, obviously they're not going to tell you exactly the level at the moment, but it will be high bandwidth memory uh, powered and will of course also feature their upcoming Zen line of CPU cores which we've discussed in depth, uh, which will have a 100 gigabyte per second interconnect between it and the GPU, which of course once again will be Greenland, and have up to seven, well, several tel uh, gigabytes of DDR4 memory. All indications are that it will have at least 40 flops of computing performance, but once again, obviously, we're still waiting for official confirmation and for the final, you know, specifications to kind of land before we actually give exact details. Now, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, there is going to be up to 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2 featured on these GPUs, which is exactly the same as NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, but it's more than likely that for consumers, the regular, you know, gaming GPUs, it's more likely going to be between 4 and 16, and the number that's often touted is 8 to 16 for the higher end devices. If one was to compare this to NVIDIA, it's pretty much the same same situation. And once again, with high bandwidth memory 2, as you probably are aware, you're going to enjoy up to one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, which is absolutely ridiculous. We don't know mass massive amounts about the architecture of either card at the moment, but it's fair to say that Arctic Islands is going to be utilizing the successor of GCN 1.x. So for all intents and purposes, I guess you could call it GCN2, and it's most likely that the GCN architecture will have been significantly rejigged to basically take full advantage of high bandwidth memory too, because at the end of the day, you can imagine that they possibly could squeeze much more performance if the architecture had been created with that in mind from the get-go. All of this comes into a rather fortunate time to be honest because let's face it if you were to look at the GPUs found in a lot of the APUs or higher end CPUs from Intel or AMD you'll notice that to be totally honest with you if you're just doing basic desktop or basic gaming those CPUs slash APUs whatever you want to call them can pretty much handle it so which is really cutting into the entry level sales of both Nvidia and AMD now, if NVIDIA and AMD can massively reduce the power consumption of their cards, make it cheaper, which obviously reducing the die sizes and so forth, they can do that, we should see significant improvements in the performance of the entry-level models of the, um, you know, both ranges. So, the equivalent would be the 450X or whatever the hell it's going to be, let's equivalent of the in uh, AMD Radeon R7 250X, let's just call it the R7 450X, should be a massive improvement over what we've currently got, and hopefully it will enable games of 2016 to be able to be fairly playable at 1080p, and to be fair, the 250X does a pretty good job for a lot of games, like StarCraft 2 for example, but imagine if we go even a few steps further, it's very exciting stuff, at least in my opinion. Honestly, scalability is the way forward and Nvidia themselves, despite the fact that Maxwell wasn't exactly compute orientated, it looks like and obviously until we actually get the cards in our hands and play around with them it's a bit difficult to really know, but it looks like um, Pascal is going to be much more compute orientated which is 
at least in my opinion, probably a good thing. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. For now, I'm going to get going. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.